She-Hulk attorney at law has taken MCU fans by storm by joining together elements of action, humor, and satire in an entertaining and relatable way. It shows that whether you're a superhero or a lawyer, there are still some simple rules that apply to everyone and some undefeatable forces of nature that'll always get the job done. We're talking about thirst traps, of course. Let's get right into the events of the third episode. First off, let's familiarize ourselves with She-Hulk's unique style as an MCU show. A majority of the Marvel series Disney Plus has put out as as of yet, have operated under a similar premise. You know, let's make a Marvel movie but twice as long, with half the budget, and then cut it up into a couple of segments. This style has worked with shows like Loki, Hawkeye, and Ms. Marvel, but others not so much. We're looking at you, Moon Knight. However, She-Hulk has made it clear that she's not like other girls. Except for the borderline boring first episode, the show has picked up a more TV-friendly procedural format with the two episodes in a row. But that's not all. The hit series has also significantly altered the Marvel tone. While the MCU films are usually funny, they're never as cartoon-like as this show. She-Hulk can be humorous, satirical, and also downright goofy. They break the fourth wall to convey messages to fans that are in hopes of cameos and relating to extremely normal things like TikTok trends. The third episode even included a weirdly hilarious scene where our giant CGI woman lets loose with Megan the Stallion. Yeah, that's exactly what we said. There's a post credit scene with them twerking, and Meg tells Jen Walters to dial it back, but she proclaims that she'd kill for the pop star. Cringy but funny, eventually. Moving on, why was a thirst trap necessary? So the third episode showed Jen Walters taking on a pretty serious situation, working on her The People vs. Emily Blonsky case. Despite the fact that he tried to kill her cousin a couple of years ago, Walters decided to defend the recently reformed monster. However, it had just come to her attention that he actually left his cell to transform into the abomination to go head-to-head -head with Wong in the cage fight we saw in Shang-Chi in The Legend of the Ten Rings. Obviously, this video doesn't look too good for Blonsky's case, as he's trying to prove he's a reformed man. In a time of need, the attorney turns to her trusted friend who's a paralegal for some advice. Nikki does come up with a strategy that gives them a solution. However, it's not the kind of idea that you'd expect a paralegal to come up with. After the two lawyers realize they need to be in touch with Wong in order to ask him to testify on Blonsky's behalf, they think of ways to reach him. Nikki's research leads her to the Sorcerer Supreme's LinkedIn profile. How else is a guy to get a job around here? She snoops around and finds out that he used to be a librarian, and then she comes up with a truly foolproof plan to reel him in. She sends him a thirst trap with a bunch of books, of course. And what do you know? He shows up just the way she'd expected. What's more is Ginger Gonzaga aided the fans' imaginations with the thirst trap. While we couldn't see what Nikki sent Wong to lure him into testifying for her friend's case, Ginger Gonzaga shared a picture on her Twitter, showing fans what her version of the librarian thirst trap would look like. It's an understatement to say that the fans were happy to see it. Her stack of books and Margaret Atwood's works, some nonfiction and even a guide book on Spanish. She validated Nikki's strategy by captioning her picture, there's only one way to trap a librarian. MCU fans that were desperate for Easter eggs started guessing what this selection of books could possibly mean. It would have been a clever move to hide some Easter eggs in a simple post, but Gonzaga made it clear that the picture had not. After getting countless replies to her original tweet, she decided to let her fans know that the selection of books was completely random and had no greater messages. Lastly, a certain librarian was trapped yet again, staying true to his character on the show. Benedict Wong surprised fans by commenting under Ginger's thirst trap saying, on my way with the shy face emoji. These displays of interest, even if they're just pure fun, sent the fans theorizing a relationship between their on-screen counterparts in the future. The fans were hoping his appearance in this episode would extend to future episodes as well, and it seems their wish is coming true. His character will be showing up in the fourth episode as showrunner Jessica Gao gushed about him while talking to Collider. She was happy that he got the idea as soon as he came to set and went with it pretty easily. In her opinion, it's nice to see an actor come and have fun with their character on the show for a while before they go back to saving the world in their own films. Let's move on to other news. The video's not over yet. Let's get into some fresh updates about the hit series and what we can expect from it. First, here's a Spider-Man No Way Home reference you might have missed. During Jen's discussion with Wong, she tells him the video is incriminating and the parole board will not be convinced to release Blonsky because of it. The Sorcerer Supreme misunderstands Jen, believing she is referring to mind-wiping the parole board. He then gives her a knowing glance and smirks, stating he won't be erasing anyone's mind. Not again. The process is just too messy. And of course, after the fiasco that took place with the events of Spider-Man No Way Home, Wong would know to stay away from such ideas, especially when there's always an easier solution, like simply calling MIT, or in Jin's case, getting him to testify, which was what the attorney had been trying to propose to him earlier on. She-Hulk is only the second project in the MCU to mention the fallout that happened after Peter's actions, and as Spidey is a major player in the MCU now, it'll be interesting 
interesting to see how the everyone has forgotten about Peter Parker plot point will affect Peter's relationship with the mantle of Spider-Man in the future projects. Next, why is Abomination suddenly a nice guy? After a long hiatus from troublemaking in the MCU, Tim Roth's Abomination came back to She-Hulk but in the form that was completely unrecognizable. In conversation with Radio Times, showrunner Jessica Gao shared how her creative team managed to reform the monstrous super soldier into a kind of reformed criminal. Gal felt that a newer version of Emil Blonsky should be shown to the viewers since his last appearance in 2008's The Incredible Hulk. She thought that it would be a fun twist to the show if they brought back a character that was so vital to Hulk lore and flipped the audience's expectations of him. While deciding their direction with Blonsky's character, the team believed that taking him out of the serious context that was set around him from 2008 and putting him in this humorous show to show a more humane side of him would add some depth to his character. Roth was allowed to do a lot of improvisation as the main idea was for him to have fun with it and enjoy playing him in a new light so the viewers could see a new side of him. Lastly, could Nikki Ramos be a scroll hiding in plain sight? Last year when the show was still in production, it had been reported that Ginger Gonzaga would play an original character in the show, but what if she's actually from the comics and we haven't looked well enough? Secret Invasion is lined up for the release after She-Hulk, is based on the comic of the same name and revolves around an invasion of the planet by scrolls, of which Nikki Ramos could be a part. While she hasn't given any real concrete evidence about being a scroll, there are some slightly flimsy pieces of information that point in that direction. Ramos could be a scroll named Jacinda from the comics, because she worked with Jen Walters as a bail enforcement agent before the events of Secret Invasion invaded her life. She's also the daughter of a famed super scroll, Claire, who could be a part of the upcoming series. Now Nikki seems too calm when it comes to the weirder things in Jen's life and is also super supportive of her being and turning into She-Hulk, and this was a running theme in Jacinda's debut in the comics. What's more is that Marvel Studio designated the next show from Disney Plus to be a crossover event series, so it wouldn't be too surprising to get another reminder about scrolls from Nikki Ramos. While there's not much ground to these ideas, we're just hoping she could be a permanent member of the MCU. And that's all for this video, guys. Do you think Ginger's post has some hidden Easter eggs? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.